By the end of this video, you'll be able to create an outside world like this and then also add a glass material like this so that your spaceship looks sexy and actually looks like it belongs to space. What is up, beautiful people? We are here at chapter 11 and we are going to talk about HDRI. So we are going to add Earth, add our background, we are going to add a window. Are you ready? I am ready. But Farad, first, what is an HDRI? High dynamic range image. And what does it do exactly? It acts, in this case, as our background, the space, the stars. Absolutely. And guess what? We can also use HDRIs to light our scene. So let's say you're creating a world in a forest, right? And you have a bunch of trees, you have your character... And if you go ahead and take an HDRI online, like a really high resolution HDRI, 8K or 16K, that was captured in a real forest with a cloudy sky, you can then bring in an HDRI, use it as the background. So when your camera is looking at the trees at the very back, you'll see even more trees. And also use the HDRI to light your scene so that your scene is getting all the light from the clouds. And it's just one of the, the coolest tricks that we can use in 3D. So today, we're going to do exactly that. How do we import an HDRI? So first of all, we have to go ahead and find one, right? We are going to be using a website called Production Create. They have a lot of cool assets. Is it and, free? Well, luckily, the one we're going to be using is free. So if you go to this link, we're going to leave it in the description box below. There are download, basically it says download free space and planet HDRI images. So they've created these lists of images that you can use as your HDRI. Now we are going to be using one we've already downloaded from this same website and it's called Orbital 10 Sunset. This is the one that we're going to use which is this last one right here. And if you go ahead and open it up, the one that you're going to be downloading is the HDR. So we're going to download the 4K HDR version, which is free. All you have to do is log in. Now, once you have it downloaded, all you have to do is go ahead to your content browser. And then we're going to create a new folder called HDRI. And then we're going to drag and drop the HDR image into our content drawer. So once you've added your HDR image, it is automatically going to load here as a texture cube. That's the, the name for it. So if you go and double click it and open it up, let's see what it looks like. So it's like a flat image. But what we're going to do is actually wrap this around a sphere around our scene. But there's one thing I'd like you to do. And this one is the level of detail. So by default, it's called the MIPGen settings. And it's on, by default, from texture group. Now... What we found is that if you change this to no MIP maps, it basically makes sure that the image is not compressed. So the reason why we want to do that is because we want the most high resolution image and we don't want it to be compressed. So change that setting to no MIP maps and it will make sure that they're not being compressed at all. And then go ahead and save. So now the next thing we have to do is go ahead and bring in an HDRI around our world, right? Wow, this looks really cool from the outside, right? It looks super cool. Okay, so I'm going to change this to unlit just so we can see the world, okay? And this is our world. It's completely dark, pitch black. In order to bring in an HDRI, we're going to go to this cube right here and actually just search for HDRI. It should be there by default. Both of these are the same thing and both of them work. So just go ahead and drag and drop, okay? And now you should be able to see this little dome with the default HDRI. So just being in the middle of this, do you realize what HDRIs are used for now? Yes, the background. So imagine if you had a bunch of trees, a house here. You could just set up your camera and you can see the sky, even trees all the way at the back. And guess what? You actually have the lighting information too that you can use from this. That is the point of HDRIs. Now in any case, when you look for HDRIs, if you don't find them here, depending on your engine version, all you have to do is go to plugins and search for HDRI. Make sure this one is checked. Okay, ours is already checked by default. So there's a couple of things we have to do. First of all, let's reset this location to our world origin where our spaceship is. So it's covering that. And then let's go ahead and scale it up. So in the details panel, we can see the size, right? We can see the cube map. So this is the image that we have to replace. And then we can see the intensity. So how intense the light is and also the size. Let's increase the size to maybe something like 500. Mm, okay, that's good for now. So there is one problem, which is if we were to drag this up and down, there's a floor. In space, we don't have a floor. It makes sense for this, but not for us. Correct? We need to change the mesh. We need to change the mesh. We don't want to be using a floor. So 
if you brought in the starter content, again, we're going to steal something from the starter content. You actually have access to not a dome, but a full sphere that you can use for this case. So if we go to advanced right here, under advanced, we have the current mesh that is being used. Let's go and double click it. It's a dome, right? It's exactly what we're looking at right now. We want to change this to With something. Skybox. Absolutely. So we just look for skybox here. And we should have this if we've enabled the starter content. And look at what happens immediately. Oh. Boom. Look at it. We've got a whole sphere surrounding our spaceship, right? Which is really cool. If this spaceship... Imagine the spaceship is in a jungle. Look at that. That would be so freaking yeah. weird, man. I don't want that. You can make it lit now to see how it looks with all the lighting. Let's change this to lit and see what happens. So lit, boom. Boom. So right now we got this guy. Yeah. And if we go to our HDRI backdrop, increase the intensity... All right, that's how intense it is. And you can even see it. Okay, that's way too intense. My computer's lagging. Hold on. Okay, yeah. Oh my God. It's way too intense. But do you see the lighting? It's actually bouncing off within our spaceship. Let's change this back to one. And now it's time to go ahead and replace this with our own HDRI. Let's use our favorite icons. Right, right here. So it's already selected. Let's just switch it with this icon. Boom. Boom. So can't see anything. Can't see anything now. But guess oh. what? Our Earth is right there. We need to rotate it. We need to rotate it. How so, do we do it? Well, as soon as we've got HDRI selected, we're going to hit E and rotate it on this axis and bring it to the front side. But the problem is, Farad, that right now, this is all the way down there. And we need to bring it up. Now, the one thing you have to understand is you cannot rotate it on this axis. For some reason, you can't. I wish we could, but we can't do it. We can only rotate it on the Z axis. So in order to bring this up, we'll have to play with the projection center values, how the uh, texture cube is being projected on top of this skybox. So we had to play with a lot of values to get ours right. And Farhad, can you tell me what those values are? We need to change the projection center. There's X, X, Y, and Z, by the so way. So for X and Z, to change it to 90,000. 90,000. Boom. So this is for the X. And for the Z, 90,000. Thousand. Okay. So we still can't see it again. No, because our scale, I think, should be bigger. Where is it? Okay, it's gone. So no, it's fine. This is exactly what will happen to you. So let's go and reset these values. So right now it's here. Let's go and play with the number slowly. So I want to change the size because 500 is too small. 3,500. Right? 3,500 because I want the Earth to be far away. So 3,500. Okay, now it's really far away. And our world is much bigger, which is a lot more realistic. I think now you can put 90,000. So let's start with a Z. Let's go to 90,000. Yes. Okay, nice. Yeah. You see how it's lifted? Let's go inside. Perfect. Maybe it's too much. I want to change this to maybe 50,000. Too low, I think. Maybe 75,000. Perfect. X to make this it is a bit perfect. Tilted. So if we add value to X, it's going to tilt, tilt it, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's try. What should we try? Uh, same 80,000, maybe. 80,000. Oh, <gasps> yes. Baby, look at that. Yes. Okay. This is Shall we doing. rotate it just slightly like that? Ooh. Wow. This is looking good. And it looks like it's really far away yes. as well because we made the size bigger, right? Yes. And just like that, we have actually created our HDRI. Don't forget to add the window at the back. Now our spaceship is open. Our spaceship is open. We don't want that, do we? No. Nope. We want to add a window. So how do we do that? Add the box, change the material. As, as simple, simple as that. that. As yeah. simple as that. So we're going to go ahead. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to add a box. I'll just steal this guy. I'll just steal this guy, right? I'm going to hold Alt, duplicate it, bring it at the back here. I want to make it thinner because we don't want our glass to be that thick. And then I'm going to go ahead and lift this guy up, bring it to the middle. And then now I'm just going to scale it on this axis, which is the Y. And then on the Z to cover the glass. And we're going to go in. Right now it's all blocked. But guess what? We're also going to use our starter content again. And use a glass material from there that is available. So let's go to starter content. Okay. We can actually even search it right here. So let's just do it here. In our materials, this is going to search the entire engine project, this project. And then we're going to search for glass. So with our starter content, we have a bunch of different glass material. And we're going to test a bunch of them, see which one works the best. Let's just try with MS glass material instance. See what happens. Nice. Boom. Yeah. And it already I works. Love it. Yes. it already works. You're seeing the reflection of everything within that glass. Oh, my goodness. Dude, this looks so freaking sick. I love it. You don't need to change it. Okay. 
I I honestly, there's nothing to change here. This is so freaking cool. I just want to see one last thing. If you go to our post-process volume, play with the reflections. Do we see any difference or not? Do you think we're going to see any differences? Let's see. Change the max reflection. So, yes. 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 You see? Yes. It even impacts the glass right here. So keep it. But also three. impacting your FPS. Also impacting my yeah. FPS. So this is what we're going to keep. And just like that, you guys have learned how to create an HDRI and a glass material. Hold, Hold up. up! Did you know that you can use photogrammetry to create highly photorealistic scenes by taking what exists in the real world into 3D? We've been using Polycam to do exactly that using our phone and drone. That's right. And shout out to them for sponsoring this video, giving you guys 30% off their promo plan. The promo code is bad. No, 30% off their plan. <laughs> Not the promo plan. No, the they don't have a promo plan. <laughs> 30% off their plan. Pro plan. Pro plan. Use the code bad decisions in the link in the description. Let's continue. So Faraz, I have a question. Yes. What if my scene is laggy and I have a really, really low FPS? So if that is the problem you're facing right now, I really recommend you check out this setting right here. This one says scalability. And currently, if you click it, it's on cinematic. Basically, think of this as all of the different settings on extremely epic and ultra. So if you were to play video games, you know how you go on max settings to make that game look really good? This is what we're doing right now. So if your computer is suffering, we definitely recommend turn this guy down. Especially as we go towards the end of this course, we're going to be adding in more assets and your computer might not be able to handle it. If you still want to follow through, take this and put it to something like high or medium. And your materials will look different. Of course, your shadows will look slightly different. That is okay because you actually have the option to go ahead and add render time at the very end of the course when your computer doesn't need to look at the scene and render it at 60 FPS. It has time to render in peace. You can then go and bump this up back to cinematic and render without having your computer crashing. So again, if in any case you need to change this, click and change. Now, in one or two scenarios I've faced where we didn't have this option, in case if you can't see it, it's going to be right here at the top right, settings, engine scalability settings. So it'll work the same way. You're welcome. We told you this chapter is going to be easy. Next chapter, we are going to teach you guys how to import assets into our scene. Yes, these assets are going to come from online resources or other 3D software. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.